here at Terrapin Glass, and we're here today with our friend Mark. Hi. Um, Mark's up visiting from Granby, Connecticut to make some glass here at Terrapin Glass Blowing Studio in Jaffrey, New Hampshire. And we're, we're started off by making a, what's called a crackle cup, and uh, you'll see how it's made. It's, uh, it's an interesting pattern, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Ready to get started? Yep. So, before we began, we put a whole bunch of chunks of color over here in this pickup box. So they're chunks of solid colored glass, and they've been soaking at about 950 degrees for about an hour now. So they're definitely hot and ready to pick up. Mark's got a blowpipe right here. He's making sure that the tip of that is nice and hot so that that color chunk will stick to the end of his blowpipe. This will leave us with a nice solid inside color of the cup. So he's going in, picking up that solid color, and he's gonna come on over and heat it up. So Quickly now before. the difference between the pickup box and the glory hole is over a thousand degrees. So he doesn't wanna just stick that color right in. The difference might shock the glass and make it shatter. So he'll be losing his chunk of color if he does that. So notice he's just hanging out right by the door of the glory hole, letting the color warm up before he starts sticking it in all the way and gets it nice and hot. So he's just looking to heat that all up, get it a nice even temperature inside and out. And then he's gonna use this table right here, the marver, to give it a nice even shape. He wants to make sure that it's all connected onto the rod nicely. Um, it's nice and smooth. And he might even make it slightly Actually, I'm, I'm going to do it with the jacks. Oh, he's going to do it at the bench with the jacks. So there are many different ways to get the same effect with glass blowing. You can see he's using the back of the jacks as a flat surface, very much like the marver to shape it. The benefit of doing it this way is he's sitting right there and he can really just see what he's doing. So he's sitting at that bench and you can see his left hand's constantly rolling. He's spinning it to make it nice and round and even. So it's however many times he passes over those jacks will shape that rather than trying to shove and force it. He lost his seat so he's going to go and reheat that up in the glory hole and then he can sit down and shape it a little more. So this is, um, I'm pretty sure it's a turquoise blue, and this is gonna become the inside color of the glass. And if, if things go right, the, the blue will show through the cracks in the white, so the outside will be two colors. We're just gonna let it cool off a bit, we're gonna put some glass on it, and then we're gonna put a, a starter bubble in it, and then we're going to um, put the white over it. So he's letting this cool off so that when he goes back in the furnace, it's a nice stiff core to wrap around. He doesn't want it to be too hot because then he could drop some of the color in the furnace. He doesn't want it to be too cold because then it could crack and shatter when it hits the heat of the furnace. So this is our furnace. It runs at 2,075 degrees and it's filled with clear glass. So he's wrapping clear glass around that color. He's gathering clear glass. So you can see now he's got clear glass wrapped all around his color and he's using this table, which we call the marver, to shape it. And we're gonna heat this up one more time and put the starter bubble in it. So the glass is constantly heating and cooling. He's reheating it in the glory hole so that it'll move easier and he can shape it in the way that he wants. He's also reheating it in the glory hole because he wants that inside bubble to be a nice even temperature with the outside bubble. He's equalizing the heat. So he blew into it, put his finger over the end. This is forcing the pressure up to the hot glass and a bubble will come. So the air expands when it hits the hot glass and it creates a bubble. So that's called the capping technique. 
And you can see it definitely has a bubble in there. Are you gathering again? Hmm? Are you gathering again? Yeah. We'll gather again, then we'll do the white. So now he has a nice bubble, but he wants a little more glass. He's going to let it cool down again, and then he's going to go back in the furnace and repeat that same process. But this time, he's going to be adding some of this white frit. So this is a uh, crushed up chunks of colored glass that's really finely ground, and it's an oh, enamel white color, right? So he's going to take that clear glass from the furnace and roll in the white, and that will make his outside layer white. We'll gather on this one more time. So once more, he's gathering out of the furnace, encasing that whole bubble with clear glass. He's going to sit down and use a block to shape it a little bit. So right now, he's using a block made out of fruit wood. The block hangs out in water all day long, and when that the heat, uh, the hot glass, it creates a layer of steam in between the glass and the wood. So he's actually rolling that glass on steam and shaping it. Notice whenever the block starts burning a little bit, he just renews that layer of steam by dipping it in the bucket behind him. So now he has a nice, even controlled shape. He's going to get it hot and he's going to go roll in that color and pick up the white, which will be his outside color layer. Dude. Two layers of white at least. And try to get it as even as we can. So put one layer on, we'll give it a nice melt. Definitely. <laughs> so we want to get a good setup, the right shape before we start inflating it, make things easier. If it starts evenly, it goes well. If it starts with an uneven bubble, you're fighting it the whole way to finish the piece. So a crooked bubble usually means it's going to be a crooked cup. Are you shaping it some more? What? I'm going to blow it up a bit and then... Okay. So notice he's spending a little bit extra time pulling down the tip of that bubble. So the tip of that bubble is going to be the bottom of the cup, and he wants that to be the thickest part of the piece. You don't want a really thin bottom of your cup or it's very likely to break. So he's sucking all the heat out of the tip and then blowing into the bubble. The air is going to go to the sides because it's the path of least resistance and the tip is going to stay thicker. One more time. So it's very important just to have a nice even setup, nicely blown out before we dunk it in water and get the crackle going. So what we want to do here is we're going to reheat this and we're going to push it into the cold water. The idea is to get the outside hard so that it cracks while the inside is still soft enough 
so when we blow out the bubble, the cracks will propagate and we'll get a, a nice alligator sort of pattern on it. So the white's going to freeze and the inside color is going to poke through those frozen cracks. So he's getting it really hot in the glory hole. He's going to dunk it in water, pay a little extra attention to cooling the tip more, and then he's going to blow into it. So this is the exciting part. And he froze that layer. Now he's blowing that color through. And we got a little bit. We'll do it again. Sometimes it takes a couple tries to get it. Yeah, one more I think will do it nicely. If you're really good at this, you can get it to go in, in one shot. I find it usually takes me two, maybe three to get a good pattern on it. That's looking pretty good. So now we're going to switch over to a hose and start making a cup. So there are multiple ways to get air into your piece. Mark's preference is to use a blow hose. So he has absolute control of how much air is coming in and out. Some people do it themselves by switching back and forth between blowing into the hose and shaping, or blowing into the blow pipe and shaping it. And other people like to have some person sitting at the end of their bench and the gaffer, which would be Mark, the person whose piece it is, tells them blow harder, blow softer, stop blowing. So Mark's doing this all on his own right now, which is incredible multitasking. He's blowing into the end of his blowpipe with the blow hose while he's completely rolling all the time and he's shaping his piece. Right now he's using a tool called the jacks to cut the neckline. So the neckline is going to be the smallest part of the whole piece, and that's where it's going to break off later, and we'll open it up to make a lip. So he's working on the mother of all shapes. He has a nice tight neckline, he has a nice round ball with thin sides and a thicker bottom. I mean, We probably got to turn the gas down. Might take a couple tries to get a good one. This one's reducing a bit on the outside. Now we're going to so stretch. He's using gravity right now to stretch that out and it'll start becoming more like a cup. So he's heating and stretching. and we no longer have a ball. So now he's blowing into it, cooling the sides, rounding the sides, and I'm right here with the paddle, ready to flatten his bottom one more whenever time. he's ready. So what this a color is got strange teamwork there. right here at its best. So he's heating that bubble again, He's going to cool the sides, blow light into it, and I'll paddle his bottom. Paddle on. Want to run a bit? Yep. So we like to put a little bit of a clear bit on the bottom. It gives it a nice spot to lay them for the punty. It also allows us to torch the bottom without changing the color of the cup at all. And it gives us a little more thickness so it's less likely to break. So okay, I've got a little flip. bit of glass 
on the end of a solid rod, and Mark put it on the bottom of his cup. So that we would call a bit. Okay, paddle. And let's twenty that up. So Mark's finished with working on the bottom of his cup. I'm getting him a solid rod with a little bit of glass on it, and I'm gonna shape it. So this is called a punty. For most hand-blown glass objects, you need a punty. Sometimes you can find a punty mark on the bottom of the pieces. Sometimes they're ground away or melted away with the torch. So I'm creating a punty right here. Mark likes a nice little pointy punty. And Mark's gonna keep his cup nice and warm while I get this ready. And then we'll bring it over and plop it on the bottom. Let me just cool it real quick. So I'm nice and warm. Mark is a little cold, so it's a cold seal. It'll break off later. He grabs me, plops me on the bottom. We can spin around a little bit to get it on center. Feel pretty good? Yep. Feels good here. And then I'll put some water on his neckline. With the bonk, the vibration will break it off at that weak point. And now he's off the blowpipe and onto my solid rod, and this will allow him to open up the cup. We're gonna stretch it out a little bit and trim it before we finish it. Let's grab it with a tweezers. Trim the end now. Try, try to keep it as nice and even. It may have to be retrimmed again. You can trim it again, Dom. Yeah. Are you putting a lip wrap on it now? What? No. Uh, let's get there and see. That didn't trim very well at all, so it needs to be redone. So he's using a tool called the straight shears to cut off any of that yucky stuff that might be on the lip. So he pulled it, thinned it out, now he's trimming it all off. No lip wrap. So now he's going to heat it up and start opening and shaping it. Give me a light paddle as I open this, Tom. Yep, hop on. So once more, we have some teamwork going on go. here. Mark is opening up his cup while I'm paddling the lip to make sure it's nice and smooth. That's good. He's the gaffer, it's his piece and I'm his assistant, so I listen to whatever he has to say. If he needs a paddle, I stand there and wait until he says paddle on, and I stay on there until he tells me to get off. 
my job is to make his life easier in whatever way I can. I don't know that I need you yet. One more good heat and we'll be finished. Not quite the shape we were going for, but you can see what the crackle pattern looks like. It takes a long time and a lot of practice to think of something in your head and come out exactly the way you want it right away. Um, I've been working for about four years. I think Mark's at five. So compared to the master glass blowers with last years under their belt, we've still got a long way to go before we make anything that's considered perfect in Take, any way. It takes a lifetime to get really good. I think we're ready to box this one. Let's do another. So when he's finished with his piece, he gives it a flash, uses a tool called the tweezers to put a little bit of water on his punty, and we're gonna drop it over here in this here drop box. This will allow me to torch the bottom, get rid of, rid of any of the sharpness from the punty, and I can put it in this here annealer. So he's got a normal butter knife, giving it a few taps, and then a bonk. The vibration will break it off where we want it. And I can use a map gas torch to torch the bottom. Oops. Oops. And here we have a cup. So we put everything in this box right here. This is called the annealer. It runs at 960 degrees all day long. If we were to put our finished work on the table, it would cool down too quickly and it would crack. So what the annealer does at the end of the day is bring it down really slow and steady, and this will temper the glass and anneal it. And so by tomorrow morning, it'll all be down at room temperature and ready to use.